After the rain squall passes, I scribe the two pavers we're going to cut in preparation for the wet saw. I operate my wet saw by laying the paver on the rolling platform. I rehearse the cut before the saw is turned on and making sure the blade is going to roll exactly along the pencil line. Last week we got these first two steps secured to our concrete foundation and today we're going to get started on this triangular area where the staircase turns around for the last three platforms. In the process of laying all our pavers on top of each other, things can get a little bit out of alignment. Like these three pavers, when I put my level across the top of these bricks I can see these three are sitting about two mil lower than the rest. So I've indicated that by marking it out with pencil on the foundation. So when we get to this point, it's a reminder that I need to pack it up a few more extra mil to get a really good, consistent, flat step along here. I always give the area I'm working on a thorough wash down. It helps the mortar stick to the concrete foundation and also makes it easier to wash off any spills we get on the finished pavers. I'm using a chisel to scrape loose any excess mortar from the course that we laid the previous day. Then I sweep it clean and do one final check with my level and mark out any low areas to assist me when I lay the next course. The triangular platform step we're constructing now starts with the same 200 by 400 pavers on the edge of the step and then transitions into 300 by 300 pavers which is a pattern we'll be using throughout all the platform steps. I start this next course by dry fitting the paver and using my packers to get it to the right level. Just like we did on the previous steps, we want to create a very slight slope for rain drainage. Once I'm satisfied I have the correct thickness of packers under the paver, I set it in place and in this case we're using tile cement because there's only a very small gap between the foundation and the paver. When I butter the back of the paver with tile cement or mortar, I'm careful to cover all the way to the edges. I don't want to create any voids or weak points between the bottom of the paver and the top of our concrete foundation. Once I check the front edge overhang is consistent with the formula of our other steps, I clean up the paver and then repeat the process all the way along this top edge. Another rainy afternoon, I don't know what I'm to do. I just miss you more than anything. It's way too quiet in the house. I'm just wasted on the couch. Cause I don't want to feel anything. Wish you'd stay. Me. This isn't how it's supposed to be Wish you'd stay Stayed here right with me I can't shake that feeling That we said goodbye too soon With the front edge of the triangle platform complete I'm changing the dimensions of our pavers to 300 by 300 I spent a bit of time calculating how this new paver dimension would tie into the other pavers while maintaining our offset brick pattern. Here you can see how the packers I used to set the level on the first course extend into the next course. I use this as a guide to know what size packer I'm using on the back of the next paver I'm going to be laying. I then dry fit the paver in place and check it with my level as I need to maintain a very slight slope for rain drainage. When I'm satisfied it's at the correct level, I remove the paver in preparation for sticking it to the foundation. In this case we've switched back to normal brick mortar as it's quite a thick joint between the foundation and the bottom of the paver. I use the thickness of the packers as a guide for how much mortar I need to add. I want to add enough mortar so it's sitting slightly above the packers. That way when I set the paver on the mortar, 
it will squeeze out the sides. Then I know I've got a really good contact between the paver and the concrete. After cleaning up any excess mortar around the edges of the paver, I move on to dry setting the next one and repeat the whole process. I know the hours getting late. I shouldn't sit here contemplating. I just can't stop thinking about us. I won't forget a single thing from drunken nights to Sunday mornings and how you smile at me. Wish you stay. After completing the first course of 300 by 300 pavers, I set up for the next course. The layout for this is much simpler, as we're using the classic half offset brick layout. The first paver in this course is going to require a cutout on one of the corners because it ties into the next platform step. finish the day with the completion of this second 300 by 300 course and set up a temporary barricade so no one accidentally walks on our pathway overnight. This is a really important step as people can be used to walking through a certain pathway and if you don't leave some kind of indicator for them to not walk on it, it's likely someone can step on the pavers before they're set properly which can create a bit of a problem for the next day when we want to continue. The next morning I prepare for the day's paving by cleaning off any excess mortar from the previous day's paving and giving the area a thorough cleaning and wash down. custom cutting of the pavers in small batches for efficiency. I needed to custom cut one for the beginning of this next course, so I cut all the pavers that I needed to finish the previous courses. Once I finish dry fitting this next paver, I'll cement them all down in one batch. Then I'll be able to start the standard course for the next row. She kept dreaming of a world. platform step complete. I let it set up overnight. I need it to be solid enough for me to stand and work on for the next stage of our process. The second half of the platform staircase comprises of three identical square platform steps. 
I'm going to spend some time doing a dry layout on this first square platform step to establish the formula that will repeat throughout the rest of it. I'm starting by doing a dry layout of the first riser. I'm using the same 100 by 200 pavers as we used in the other steps and laying them out in a symmetrical alignment. I use my tape measure to establish the centre of the square platform step and lay the pavers out accordingly. One of the less interesting parts of paving is managing the material flow. Pavers are heavy and take a lot of effort to move around. They're also vulnerable to chipping and scratching every time you move them from one place to the next. So for those reasons I have a strategy for how I arrange my pavers on my job site. The first part of the plan was to get the delivery truck to deposit the pallet of pavers in a convenient place. In this case I got them close by but not in the way of my construction. They're also uphill from where I'm working which makes it easy to transport them downhill in my wheelbarrow. When pavers are new from the factory, they often have little burrs on their corner as part of the molding process. These little bumps and burrs can push the pavers out of alignment when we're laying them. So I give all the pavers a light rub on their edge as I stack them in preparation for laying. This also gives me a chance to inspect the pavers visually to see if they have any defects or cracks. I can now return to completing the dry layout for the first of these square platform steps. I set the forms for the concrete foundation 1500 mm wide with the idea that five 300 mm pavers would fit evenly across the span. After laying them out in place and double checking with my tape measure, I can see that our formula is working perfectly. I want the offset brick pattern between the risers and the first of the treads to match the previous steps we've already created. So I'm penciling out the layout to keep it exact. I reference all my measurements from the center of the step, clearly marking it out with my pencil and writing any measurements I'm gonna be needing later on the actual concrete. Once I've checked that everything is square and level, there's one final adjustment I need to make. These risers are sitting about 5mm too high for our formula. I take one of the risers up to the wet saw and cut 5mm off the side of it and then return it in place to check that it's at the right height. I'm going to use a 10mm packer to scribe a mark on the back of the paver then I can cut it on my wet saw. That way all the pavers will end up 5mm lower and our formula will stay intact. Both end risers are going to be cut out of the 300mm pavers as the stock 200mm pavers aren't wide enough for our coverage. I scribe a mark on the 300mm paver the same as we've done for all the risers then cut it on the wet saw and return it in place to check it for fit. When I'm satisfied everything's level and flat, I cut the riser for the other side and prepare to cement them all in place. Cutting grass and chopping wood Can be romantic Sipping coffee under the apple tree It's gentle manly Well you're a good man Quite the best man A real fine man for this course of risers to set up, I'm going to double back on the lower part of the staircase and finish off a small custom cut piece that needs to be cemented in place. I often leave small pieces like this until later in the project so I can use one of the off cuts of the other pavers to generate the piece I need. This way I don't waste any material. I add black pigment to some of the mortar batches for pavers that might be visually exposed where the mortar joins into the concrete. This way the pigmented mortar invisibly blends into the pavers. One of the advantages of the tile cement over the normal brick mortar 
is it sets up and stiffens more quickly than the mortar, especially on a warm day like today. So by the time I've finished cementing this piece in place, I'll be ready to start adding the horizontal pavers on the platform step. It's really important to have this first horizontal paver set completely centered and square. So I take the time to dry fit it and mark it out with a pencil. So when I stick it in place with the mortar, I can get it exactly to the mill of the original position. I double check the overhang on the front of the paver is set to our standard. Then use my level to confirm that I've got the right size packer underneath the paver. Now I'm ready to stick it in place in the same method we've been using throughout this project. horizontal pavers laid for the first of our three square platform steps, I'm able to cement the risers in place for the next step in preparation for tomorrow. This way these risers can set up solid so tomorrow we can lay the horizontal pavers on top of them. In the construction of steps, there's often a lot of materials that have to be placed on top of other materials. So it's important to set up a plan and a goal to have certain materials set in place so the next day they're ready to have the new materials on top of them. After all the risers are set in place, I double check with my spirit level that they're sitting completely flat on the face. After making some slight adjustments and filling in some voids, I complete the day by rinsing the whole paving area down. Wetting down the pavers we just laid today helps the adhesion to the concrete by helping them dry slowly, which results in a stronger bond between the paver and the concrete foundation. The next morning I remove the temporary barricades and wash the whole area down in preparation for our day's paving. To finish off the platform step we did yesterday, I need to add the two corner pieces of the tread either side of the start of the platform. I placed the 200 by 400 paver in the space we left yesterday and scribe it using my spirit level in preparation for cutting it on the wet saw. I'll need to take a break whilst this rain passes over. In the area where I work, we get a lot of sudden rain squalls that blow in off the ocean. After the rain squall passes, I scribe the two pavers we're going to cut in preparation for the wet saw. I make sure I've got a really clear pencil line to help achieve an accurate cut. I operate my wet saw by laying the paver on the rolling platform and aligning it to the blade. I rehearse the cut before the saw is turned on by rolling the paver under the blade and making sure the blade is going to roll exactly along the pencil line. I slowly cut a shallow channel along the pencil line. This helps the water in the wet saw keep the paver wet as we cut it. I go back and forth slowly cutting deeper into the paver. You have to give the wet saw time to do its job. And if you try and cut too quickly, there won't be enough water in the process, which can overheat the blade and warp it, 
which makes it difficult to make accurate cuts. Once I've cut a channel about halfway through the paver, I do one final plunge cut, slowly passing the paver under the blade to finish the process off. After thoroughly washing the paver and the wet saw down, I return the paver in position and check it for fit. I can see here that the cut we made matches the edge of the pathway nicely. This completes the first of the three square platform steps. Join me in the next episode as we complete our pathway and I explain some of the design choices and layout of the pavers we used. Cutting grass and chopping wood Can be romantic Sipping coffee under the apple It's gentle manly well, you're a good man Quite the best man